morning, everyone. Uh, so, good morning, everybody. Oh, what an amazing day today. Hallelujah. The service haven't started. My heart is already bubbling with joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the living God. Uh, let's appreciate the choir for singing so glorious today. We serve an amazing God. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. What a beautiful name. Lord, let's appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's appreciate him. He is worthy of our praise. He is an excellent God. He is a powerful God. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. I believe that God is really blessing us this season. Amen. There's a lot of testimony that I've been pouring out. A lot of testimony because you have overcome, you have overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Do you have any of our comma in the house? I said, do you have any overcomer in the house? Yes. Testimony time? Overcomer's time? Yes. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Yes. I read the scripture and I believe that all of us are going to really come out in our numbers because there's a lot of declaration that has been declared over our life and I believe that all of us have testimony in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how small it is, how big it is, you have to come out and testify of what God has done in your life in the name of Jesus. I read in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 12. And it came to pass when, when it, on a certain city, it behold a man full of leprosy who, who Jesus saw fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. Hallelujah. And he put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will thou clean and immediately the leprosy left him hallelujah verse 14 and when he charged him to tell no, but, no man but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the cleansing according to Moses commandment for a testimony unto them hallelujah so before all, all your breakthrough you have to first of, all, first, first of all come to the house of God and declare it hallelujah don't keep it to yourself so I'm going to give two people opportunity hallelujah or more or more all of us, hallelujah, praise the living God. To come and give testimony. So get by raising your hand. Oh, my sister, dear, dear my sister, is clap her hands for her as she come forward in the name of Jesus. Morning, church. Morning. God is good. I'm so grateful to be here. I thank God for my solution family. Um, I thank God for protection um, about two weeks ago or so. Um, we had just been, like the day before, we'd been told about a, kid, a guy that was kidnapping kids in Ifield, which is just down the road from where we are in Langley Green. And oh, my little darling child, she went out, a neighbor's kid came to call her to play. She went out to play. And I kept, you know, checking on them, and they were there, they were safe. The fourth time I went to check, she was down the road with a man. I couldn't see the front of the man, I could just see his back. You know, and I just thank God that the prayers we pray over our lives, prayers of protection come to pass. Amen. But I pray, I thank God most especially for grace. It is not by our mind, by our doing. God is just amazing to us and we should just appreciate him. I appreciate God today. I appreciate God for all of you today. And I thank God for being here. Hallelujah. This, this section, I don't know, are you not clapping your hands for that for Jesus for the testimony? Oh, let us appreciate the King of all kings. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Oh, oh hallelujah. Oh, she doesn't want, even want me. Oh, you want to give a testimony? Hallelujah. We thank God for that testimony in the name of Jesus. Okay. Yes, let's turn our attention to our amazing God. He may be invisible, but he's extremely present. You're all extremely, extremely special if you're in this place today. Um, just briefly, I was brought up in an atheist family. Jesus Christ was a swear word in my family. I came to know the living God at 38 in the Middle East. And um, step by step, things have happened. Do doors opened for me. He's freed me of many addictions. Um, I've been 30 years sober, clean, um, thanks to the living Lord, Jesus. Um, and I just want to testify that the door, doors have opened for me, who was a, a, a nobody that was a, a drunk, um, a drug addict. He opened doors for me in palaces um, to do 
to do uh, work in places and uh, he opened the doors to meet many people wealthy by the world standards and I just want to encourage you all this is a place that I've been praying for since 2019 where to go. I was, I was disturbed spiritually where I was and I was just asking the Lord for three months where I should go. Little by little, doors have opened to a place called Crawley, which I'd never heard of. I didn't even like the name, I, to be honest with you. I, I thought, I don't even like the name of it. But when I heard this amazing man of God, <laughs> Solution Chapel and the truth here, let me, let me testify that I have searched many many doors I have gone through many wrong doors but the Lord has brought me back I've, I've been like a Saul to Paul experience and I just want to testify and thank God that for for this place um, if you're here for the first time I encourage you to just keep listening keep praying for truth because um, Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me um, and I just yeah give all the glory to him also just to let you know the the, the love I have found here has been 10 times more than I've ever experienced elsewhere. Yeah. Better than any monetary riches. Uh, the Lord has opened a door for me in a home and I'm feeling a peace there. I just, just to share it, at this stage, I don't have a, I just have plastic cups at the moment. I haven't bought a mug yet, but the Lord will, the Lord will provide. And I'm, and I'm feeling more at peace, more at joy than in palaces in the Middle East. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let us celebrate it one more time. Let us celebrate the King of all kings. Let us celebrate the Lord of all lords. He is worthy of our praise. He's, this is the doing of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Praise the living God. Let us celebrate Jesus in the house. Hallelujah. I don't know how it's going to be. This is transformation service, but I believe that all of us are going to receive major breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Oh, let us clap hand together for that testimony. Oh, let us thank Jesus for more testimonies. Oh, Father, we worship you. We adore you. We enthrone you. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our provider. And you are the ashes of days. We thank you, Lord, for the protection. We thank you, Lord, for the increase. We thank you for the restoration. You alone deserve all the glory in this house in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God, church. Amen. What powerful testimonies we've had this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is good. God is working in our midst. Amen. 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 I like the testimony uh, sister shared, you know, that she doesn't have any plastic. She only has plastic cups at the moment, but the peace of the Lord, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, but as long as you have the peace of the Lord, that's all that matters. Amen. As long as you are planted in the right place, that's all that matters. As long as you are receiving the enriching words of Christ, that's all that matters. Amen. So we thank God for those powerful testimonies of God's protection and God's provision for a place to grow spiritually. Amen. This will be your story. This will be your testimony. Amen. Well, it's time for us to give unto the Lord this morning. Amen. And to give unto God who is faithful, who we have proven time and time and time and time again, and he remains fr fruitful and he remains a blessing in our life and he, he, he prospers us. He makes everything that we do to prosper in the works of our hands. Amen. So this morning we want to give. If you are giving, the, uh, the, the, the finance stewards will help us to distribute the envelopes we have separated the building fund to the normal offering and tithes, amen, and the, and the building uh, uh, projects people have requested that you make it clear if you are, you know, they, they urged us, um, was it last week or a week, a week, two weeks ago, to separate it for every, if you are being blessed every week, take a portion and put it aside, whatever it means to you. Um, please, if you put it in the green envelope and that offering will go into a different um, basket so that they can account for their work that they've been commissioned to do. Amen. So let us help them. And if you need a book for your building fund, please see 
any of uh, the of 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 um, the building um, stewards, amen, who will then give you a book which has the denominations that you want to. Every time you give, tear yourself one. Um, I was just talking to one lady yesterday. That I said we need to tear them and put it in our in our home every time we give towards the building fund. We need to tear the strip, take the side portion, stick it in a wall somewhere because God will remember that offering, amen. God will remember you building something towards the building of the house of the Lord. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to read a scripture before the, the, the victory voices take over. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter number four. Amen. Mark chapter four and verse number 26. The Bible says the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Amen. And should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how it's going to grow. Amen. I like that. He takes the seed and he, he scatters it. He scatters it. He scatters it. You might think you're just scattering money, but you are scattering seed this morning. You, it might seem like you're wasting money, but you are scattering seed this morning. You don't know how it's going to grow, but keep scattering. Keep scattering this morning. Amen. The Bible says, for the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Amen. It will begin to sprout up this morning as you scatter the seed. Just keep scattering. Bring your tithe. It might look like it's a lot of money. But don't worry about it. Keep scattering. Keep giving it to God. Keep sowing. A harvest will begin to sprout up. Bit by bit, it will begin to break forth. Then the blade will be seen. Then your harvest will come. Amen. Then the Bible says, but when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Amen. Amen. Immediately when the harvest comes, you will put in the sickle because the harvest has come. Amen. So please, this morning as we give unto the Lord, let's do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Let's do it as unto the Lord from a heart of grace as the Lord has blessed us. Amen. As the Lord has done what? As the Lord has blessed us. Amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Amen. Child of God. 
your mouth and worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you are about to do in our lives. Do a new thing, Lord. Do a new thing, Father. Do a new thing, Father. Take us to the next level, Lord. Let your glory fall in our midst. Let your power be present to do exploits. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name. The Bible says that the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. You want to pray shortly and ask God to touch you and meet you at the point of your need. Amen. Did you come with an expectation? The Bible says the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. The Bible says affliction shall not rise up a second time. I want you to open your mouth and talk to God and ask him to touch you at the point of your need. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to the Lord. Ask him to touch you. Where you need him most. Ask him to touch you. Ask him to touch you. Today is your day of visitation. Today is your day of visitation. Today is your day of visitation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we have gathered this morning. Meet each and every one of us at the point of our need. Let your word come alive. Let no one live here the same. Let everyone live here with a testimony. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you just take a moment, go around a few people, give them a high five, welcome them into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Hallelujah. Well, Covenant 2019 is here. It's drawing closer. Um, remember, it's happening at the Curry Center. And it's from the 7th of August through to the 9th of August. Uh, I was praying about Covenant and um, for the first time this year, we will be having a communion and anointing service on the last day. So I want us to come with great expectation. So on the Friday, there will be a communion and an anointing service. And uh, that is going to be, this is why if you observe, for some time we haven't been having communion. So as we pray and fast for 40 days, we come on that day. The ninth will be exactly the fourth year day of the fast. But I've given you five days of grace. So you can decide to end the fasting just before covenant. Or you can continue through to covenant. Amen. So I want us to bear that in mind in Jesus' name. Uh, starting from next week, next week, um, Saturday and Sunday, we will be having two major outreaches from next week till Covenant. So that means every Saturday, corporately, we are all going to come out in our church t-shirts and we are going to go out for covenant. Amen? Do we have the flyers? Do we have flyers for covenant? Yes. So uh, today, some of us will be giving flyers and then on Saturday, we are all going to meet at the, at the Crowley Post Office or the Lloyd's Bank and it's only for one hour from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And everybody has to be there. Amen? Amen? It's a must for everyone. So, and then next week, Sunday, after service, we are also going to do 30 minutes of outreach. So after, after service, we are just going to corporately go around, give people flyers, 30 minutes, we thank God, and we let you go home. Amen? Say amen. 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 We are going to do that just for covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Because we're expecting a great harvest. Amen. And we have no doubt that God is going to show us his kindness and his favor. Now, next week, Sunday, we have a baby dedication. The announcement, there was an error in the announcement. So the baby dedication is next week, Sunday. No, the 27th of August is next week. Next week is the 21st. So next week, Sunday, there'll be a baby dedication. Uh, we are fasting. So we'll give you water to drink uh, during the baby dedication. In Jesus' name. And last but not the least, how many of you know that we are fasting and praying as a church corporate? How many of you don't know yet? Let me see my hand. Okay, so we all know. Okay, how many of you have not started fasting yet? Don't be shy. It's okay, yeah. Not all of us start at the same time. Okay, so just one person has not started yet. All right, for your information, the one person, we are fasting and praying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we we all gather at 8 p.m. every evening on the prayer line. Uh, they'll put the prayer line details on the, on the screen for you to photoshop it. And we pray for one hour. Amen. Amen. So every, every day with the exception of Thursdays. Hallelujah. It looks like I'm doing the work of the announcers. So uh, it looks like I'm going to have to take their job away from them. Well, are you ready for the word? Okay.
turn with me please in your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 12, the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Sorry, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I read, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my series that I started last week titled Living Sacrifice. Living Sacrifice, and this is part two. Living Sacrifice. And this is part two. Last week, we did establish a few things about the kind and type of sacrifice that God expects from us. In the olden days, they were sacrificing dead things unto God. And in this day and age, God does not expect dead animals any longer from us, but he expects a living sacrifice. And last week we did emphasize how Jesus Christ showed us an example of killing himself and going into the holies of holies with his own blood. And he did it once. But in the old, under the old covenant, they were doing it every year. Every year the high priest will go in there and take the blood of bulls and sacrifice it on behalf of others. But in this day and age, God expects a living sacrifice from us. God is living, so he doesn't want us to offer anything that is dead. Say amen to that. Amen. God is living, so therefore he doesn't expect anything dead from us. That's why he says, I beseech you, brethren, that by the message of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. It is your responsibility to present your bodies. It is your responsibility to present your bodies. You have to do the presenting. Every time you come to God, you present your bodies to him and say, Father, take my body as your living sacrifice. As your living sacrifice. And, and doing that is not difficult because he says it's your reasonable service. In other words, God is not expecting too much. What he's asking from you and I is reasonable. Say amen. amen. It is what? Reasonable. That's why he said it's your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. We are living in an age where everyone is conforming. We are living in a very dangerous age where things are changing rapidly. Things are changing rapidly. rapidly. And, and he says we should not conform to this world. In other words, we should not take on the ideas of this world. We should not take on the ideologies of this world. Jesus said, you are in this world, but you are not of the world. Are you following me? So therefore, he said, we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that means, if you're going to live a victorious life as a Christian, you have to live on a daily basis, renewing your mind. Say amen. amen. You have to live on a daily basis, renewing your mind. You have to renew your mind. And what do we use to renew our mind? We use the word to renew our mind. How many of you bathed last week? How many of you bathed three days ago? How many of you bathed yesterday? How many of you bathed this morning? Guess what you're doing? You're renewing your body. 
Are you following what I'm saying? If you don't put soap and sponge and water on your body, you know what will happen. You know that, don't you? So we are renewing our bodies on a daily basis. Hallelujah. The ultimate sacrifice God gave humanity was Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. Jesus died a sacrificial death on the cross. That's why we have to understand what he's done for us. Please don't take for granted what Jesus has done for you and I on the cross. He died a shameful death. He was crucified for you and I. And so we cannot take that sacrificial death for granted. After all Jesus has done for us, if all we need from him, or if we give him an ultimatum, Jesus, give me bread, give me butter, give me, give me shoe. If you don't give me shoe, I'll backslide. Then we don't understand what he did for us on the cross. I love the testimony our sister shared this morning that all I have is, is, is plastic cups or plastic plates and so on and so forth. But what Jesus has done for me is more than that. Yes. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. You see, we have lowered Christianity to just material things. Yeah. Yeah. If Christianity is about a big house, a big car, then unbelievers don't need to come to Christ because they have big cars, they have big houses, name it. They have big shoes, name it. If it is just predicated on material things, then we are of all men the most miserable. Christianity is not based on just material things. Yes, material things will come. It is added unto us when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Are you following me? So four things we must do when we are offering a living sacrifice. Four things. Number one, your sacrifice must always meet specific requirements. Your sacrifice must always meet specific requirements. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 20. Remember last week, we did look at this scripture in detail. Your sacrifice must always meet specific requirements. And Leviticus, for your information, is in the Old Testament. It's one book many Christians don't read. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 20. Are you there? It says, whatever has a defect, you shall not offer, for it shall not be acceptable on your behalf. God is specific. So this morning, if you came with a defect offering, God said, I don't accept it. Now, just to, for you to understand, now, in those days, they were offering burnt offerings. Bent. The only requirement the high priest is required to take of them is the blood of the animal. So let's say if, if a bull has a defect eye, it doesn't show in the blood. No. Are you following what I'm saying? Now this is where many Christians say uh, it's what's in the heart that matters. That's not enough. I can offer God anything. It, the only thing that matters is what's in my heart. No. God says, yes, all I need is the blood. The blood is what must be brought into the holies of holies. But he says, whatever has a defect, you shall not offer. In other words, if the goat has a, a leg and it goes like that, it's defect. If the hair of the goat... It's not even, it's defect. Now, remember, you are going to burn this offering. It's going to be burned. So, why should God be so specific about it? Today, your life will never be the same. 
the way you see God will change. Today is our transformation service. The Holy Spirit is going to transform everything in your life. Amen. Say a good amen. amen. Number two, you must do it willingly. You must do it how? Willingly. willingly. Leviticus 22 verse 19. You don't do it grudgingly. You do it how? Willingly. It says you shall offer of your own free will. Of your own free will. Nobody has to deceive you, manipulate you before you offer this living sacrifice. You shall do it of your own free will. A male without blemish from the cattle, from the sheep, or from the goats. Now you see God is so specific about how the offering must be given. But he says you must do it how? Willingly. Nobody must force you to give. Say amen. amen. That's why in this church, nobody will ever manipulate you to give anything. Anyone who does it is not permitted to be in this church. No one is permitted to manipulate you. That's why we don't take our offering after the service. We take our offering before. So no one is telling you, you say, it was pastors preaching that gave me goose pimples, that made me give a... No, no. Before you come from your home, the Holy Spirit has already told you what to give. Number three, you must sacrifice purposefully and cheerfully. Purposefully and cheerfully. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. It says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a what? A cheerful giver. So that means as you're bringing your living sacrifice, you do it how? Purposefully and cheerfully. What does it mean to do it purposefully? Do it based on your relationship between you and God. I purpose in my heart to be a blessing to my wife, not because of what she has done, I have purpose to pastor this church not based on people's offering. I have purpose to preach good not based on how people laugh, smile, or don't smile. You smile or don't smile, amen. I'm going to preach good. Amen. Say amen. amen. Oh, say a good amen. amen. So we do it purposefully and cheerfully. When you come with your offering, you don't come grudgingly. Anything you do grudgingly, God does not accept. Uh -huh. Anything you do grudgingly, God does not accept. This is why even this church, we don't force people to come to church. We don't force people to come to church. Because we want you to come purposefully. Know that every time you come, God is changing your own life. If we call you, we are just calling to check up on how you're doing because we care about you. Not to force you. By all means, you have to be in church. No. If you can't appreciate what Jesus has done for you on the cross, there is no conviction from man that will cause you to appreciate it. Number three, number four, your sacrifice must always cost you. Hmm. This one is a big one. Your sacrifice must always cost you. That's why it's called a sacrifice. Mark chapter 14 from verse 3 to 9. Your sacrifice must always cost you. Mark chapter 14 from verse 3 to 9. It says, and being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, this is Jesus, as he sat at the table, 
a woman came having an alabaster flax of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. Notice it was costly. Now how can you break something that is costly? You do it intentionally because it is sacrificial. The Bible says, but there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? She sees it as a sacrifice. They see it as a waste. <laughs> you see, you sacrifice based on what God has done for you. And have you noticed that every time you are sacrificing, somebody thinks you are wasting. Yeah. Now, I mean, let's, let's look at it. I mean, God, let's, God is a spirit. Right? God is a spirit. God is not a human being. God does not eat goats. He doesn't eat cow. He doesn't eat chicken. God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need my money. So why would God say, offer unto me a burnt sacrifice? Does he have mouth to eat that burnt goat? As they burnt the goat completely into ashes. But you see, sacrifice is not predicated on the one you are giving to, but on you. Sacrifice determines the value and the content of your heart. She sees it as a sacrifice. They see it as a waste. Uh, and it will shock you, those who thought this was a waste, they were the disciples. These were the disciples of Jesus. Verse 5. The Bible says, For it might have been sold for more than 100 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. Is that not the case today? Every time you sacrifice, people say, this could have been given to the poor. And most of the time, those who argue for the poor, have no, they don't have the poor at heart. Trust me. They don't have the poor at heart. Hallelujah. Verse 6. It says, but Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. Next verse, verse 7. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do, when you may do them good. But me you do not have always. And for your information, let me just say this. As for the poor, they will always be there. Yeah. The poor will always be there. Did you hear what I've just said? Yeah. The poor will always be there. There will be no time where there are no poor people. There will always be poor people. Where you live, there will be poor people forever. So if you really care about the poor, you should go and make sure every poor person is eradicated from where you live. So Jesus made it clear. He said, as for the poor, you have them with you always. Always. Verse 8. It says, she had done what she could she has done, she has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Verse 9, it says, Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached, in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. That's what's happening today. We are still preaching about her. We are still preaching about her. After many days. Why? Because Jesus memorialized her. Amen. Only those who sacrifice are those who are memorialized. 
That's why there must be different uh, degrees of rewards to everyone in an organization. You can't give everyone the same treat. They say, eh, why, why, why are they taking care of this one more? Have you not noticed that the president of the U.S. has more people who are willing to die for him than the Senate on the street? Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus taught us the results of sacrifice in John chapter 12 from verse 24 to 26. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He's teaching a sacrifice. He says, he who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So Jesus is teaching about sacrifice, and Jesus said that except a corn of grain falls to the ground and dies, it abides how? Alone. Alone. It abides by itself. Jesus said, if you are really going to experience the benefits of sacrifice, you must be willing to have an encounter with the ground, with the floor, with the soil. A farmer cannot say, I want a harvest and not be willing to sow a seed. Please hear this truth that I'm teaching you. I'm taking my time so you can get this. You see, many Christians like shouting, screaming, but this is not a shouting, screaming. You need to get this because I might not teach this ever again. And in this church, we don't teach the same thing twice. So I, I assume that every time we teach it once, you've caught it for life. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. You catch it for life. So Jesus said, except a corn of grain falls to the ground and dies. That means the grain has to go through a process of dying. It has to go through a process of dying. Except it goes through that process, it abides how? Alone. But, say, but if it dies, it produces much grain. Your harvest is sure. Amen. Say amen. amen. Your harvest is sure. Amen. Your harvest will never go waste again amen. in the name of Jesus. Many Christians are trusting God for harvest, yet they are not willing to put any seed on the ground. How can you harvest without a seed? That's why Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, the Bible says that as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. If you chop your seed today, it means you are chopping your harvest tomorrow. <laughs> Every time you ignore harvest season, you will suffer the consequences. Every time, sorry, you ignore seed time or seed season, you will suffer the consequences of drought in harvest season. It doesn't matter what you say. We live in this part of the world, we understand this better. Four cycles, four seasons. We have winter, we have autumn, we have summer, and we have spring. Now when it's winter, I'm talking about very heavy winter, and it's snowing and it's cold, you need a warm jacket, right? 
You can't dress like you are in summer. You will die. You will die. You will kill yourself. So every season calls for different things to be done. When it's time for winter, you dress wintry. So when it's time for sowing time, don't ignore the season because if you ignore the season, you will suffer later on in life. You see, there are many people who are wasting, excuse my language, their brains. When it's time, seed time, instead of feeding your brain with knowledge, steady, they are sleeping and watching movies. Watching, you know, I don't want to mention a certain country kind of movies. Watching, watching, watching. They are watching, watching, watching. Have you heard the latest, latest gist of the latest movie? Ah, you haven't heard? And you sit down for hours. The worst part is the omnibus. Is it omnibus? The long ones. The, the one that is in series. The one that's in series. What's it called? Omnibus series. For instance, Bold and Beautiful has been showing before you were born. Before your great, great grandmother was born. Your grandfather was born. It's still showing. It has not finished. And you sit down for hours and watch and watch, getting nowhere. I used to watch a particular movie. It's four hours. Four hours long. They do one hour of crying, one hour of singing, one hour of dancing, one hour of killing. I'm not going to tell you which country... Can you possibly sit down for four hours and watch a movie? When you can possibly make yourself better. He said, I have a university degree for information. When it comes to knowledge based, knowledge <laughs> changes and upgrades minimum every three months. It used to be three years, but now three months is even too much. Uh, how many of you are on social media platforms? Have you not noticed that when you post something on social media, in less than one minute, it's vanished because billions are posting. So by the time you post, in one minute, your post has become old. Billions are posting every second. So when it's time for seed time, don't waste your seed time. Amen. Steady. Or else you'll be a security man at Tesco for the rest of your life. At old age, at 66, you are still doing checkout. Beep. 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 Now, now checkout people have been replaced by machine now. It's do it yourself. It's a, it's a complete indictment on God and his resources and investment in human being for you to just sit at a, at a checkout and be doing beep, beep. Oh, it's, it's. If, you, if you've done it for one year, move up. I'm here to provoke you. If you are on the same level for the past 10 years, there's a problem. If your salary has not changed for the past 10 years, there's a big problem. There's a don't, because if your salary is the same for the past 10 years, you are actually going down. You are not going up. Because inflation is going up, not going down. Okay, okay, let me know. 
And we came for transformation. I want spiritual transformation. No, it starts from the mind. It starts from the mind. It starts from your mind. Let's stop wasting our mind. I don't like what the pastor is saying. He's helping you. He's helping you. A couple of weeks ago, one of the one of the sisters in the church shared a testimony that her pay grade has been increased. I said, "Praise God! This is what we want to see in the church." In this church right here, I've preached and said, "Leave here today. Tell your master, your bosses, you need to increase my my salary. Go and renegotiate. Some of us need to go and renegotiate our salaries." Amen. 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 Say amen. amen. And I decree the favor of God going with you this week. Amen. You need to go tell them, you see, I am very efficient. I'm very hardworking. I do two times, three times the job of all my colleagues here. You need to appreciate and value what I put into this organization. Amen. You need to increase my salary or my hourly rate or I'm going. Amen. And they will increase it. I said they will increase it. It's happened many times in this church. A time is coming where there will be men and women in this church where an hour they are earning 10,000 pounds. Say a good amen. amen. You see, as I prophesy, it shall it be. A time is coming where in this church, an hour people will be earning 100,000 pounds. A time is coming in this church where an hour people will be contracted for 1 million pounds. I decree it over you in the name of Jesus. You say, how shall this be? Only believe and upgrade your mind. Don't just say, I believe, I believe. I believe. No, no. Just praying in tongues is not enough. If you are going to Manchester, you cannot put five pounds worth of petrol in your car. You have to make sure you prepare in accordance to where you are going. Amen? amen? Say amen. amen. I know the kind of people God has called me to pastor. Kings and queens. So I don't just prepare a two by four message and come and stand here and say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I feel. Do you feel? No, 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 no. It's not in feeling, it's not in shaking. I teach you something that after you live here, it will be resonating in your brains for the rest of your life. I came today, I didn't feel the Holy Ghost. I didn't have goose pimples. For your information, the Holy Ghost is not in goose pimples. When I touch my wife, she gets goose pimples. Am I the Holy Ghost? Come on now. The Holy Ghost is no ghost pimples. Wake up. It's time to upgrade. It's time to go to the next level. I said it's time to go to the next level. Look at the testimony we had today. Someone, there was a lady who came to this church many years ago, I think seven years ago. She, she, she was an air, she's an air hostess. She came to Gatwick and she was looking for a church. And she came here, was it seven years ago? Seven years ago. Seven years ago she came. She lives in Dubai. So she had an encounter with this lady and then she said, oh, you're, going to, you're going to the UK, there's this church that I came to once. I think they said twice, I can't remember. Twice, seven years ago. Seven years ago. That encounter with the word has never left her. Seven years ago, somebody is coming from Dubai. She says, go to this church. The lady comes to the church. 
she has one encounter with the word. Her whole life is transformed. She said, I can't believe it. I've been praying since 2000 and what? For a church where I can be and be nourished and be fed. You are here. You come every Sunday. And, um, I don't know what pastor is going to teach today. You know, these days, pastor don't shout and scream. You, know. you think it's in the shouting and screaming. You think it's in the shouting and screaming. And her life is not been, it's, it's not been the same. She's never experienced what she's experiencing here within the short period. There's another testimony of a lady who said she's been in Crawley for 39 years. She only heard about this church two weeks or three weeks ago. She came just for two services. Her life is changed. She said she's been in Crawley for 39 years. You are going somewhere. You, you, you say, they say, there's a new prophet here. Come and see. Prophet. Prophet with no word. Fake prophet. Deceiving you. And you go. You keep running. Are you following what I'm saying? Never take for granted what God is doing here. <laughs> so, we are not doing shaking and gymnastics here. If God gives me the opportunity to pastor you just for one day, my prayer is that that one day, your life will never be the same. Amen. Just the one day. So, God dictates the terms of the harvest, not us. And to experience harvest time, you must not avoid seed time. Don't avoid seed time. Stop avoiding seed time. If you avoid seed time, you will not experience harvest time. Quickly, let's look at seven characteristics of those who sacrifice. Number one, they think generationally. <laughs> Number one, they think how generation. They don't think, ah, just me, myself, and I. They think how generationally. Number two, they die to self daily. Number two, they die to self daily. Number three, they go the extra mile. They go the extra mile. Number four, they walk in complete obedience. They walk in complete obedience. Number five, they walk in the perfect will of God. They walk in the perfect will of God. Number six, they have an undying love for God. They have an undying love for God. And number seven, they are altar builders. They build altars. So quickly, as we get ready to close, we want to look at a man who understands sacrifice. His name is Abraham. God used Abraham to teach all of us that he is the father of the faith. And as a matter of fact, Abraham read four different altars in his lifetime. The altar of prayer, the altar of praise, the altar of peace, and the altar of provisions. Anytime you see Abraham, you see these four altars. The altar of prayer, the altar of praise, the altar of peace, and the altar of provision. So we want to look at Abraham and and so the sacrifices he made. Now we're going to look at his very first sacrifice. Now remember we're talking about living sacrifice. And remember we did state and we've been stating that every sacrifice that they have been offering to God in the past have been dead sacrifice. Right? And God expects us to offer living sacrifice. So I want you to keep that at the back of your mind. 
So let's go and look at Abraham's first sacrifice that he ever made. Very important because that would help us understand the second sacrifice which he offered. And let's see how he reversed the, the situation. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 9 to 10. We won't read it from verse 1. A quick background is, you know, Abraham has worked with God from chapter 12. God told Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, leave your family to a land that I'll show you. God didn't show him the land, but he obeyed God and moved, right? And then uh, he moved with, with, with Lot. In chapter 13, we saw that Lot went with him and then God started blessing him because he obeyed God. And then all of a sudden, there was contention between the headsmen of Lot and the headsmen of Abraham. As for contention in headsmen, it's been there from time immemorial. So when the contention arose, Abraham said to Lot, you know what? There's no point for us to fight. The land is too big. You choose. Lord chose the best part. And God said to Abraham, lift up your eyes from where you are, northward, eastward, westward, for all the land that you see, I'll give it to you. And so Lot left, and then Abraham started to prosper. So in chapter 15, God is still communicating with, with Abraham. And God said to Abraham, that I'm really going to bless you. Now, don't forget that God had already promised Abraham that he's going to make him a father of many nations, right? So at this point, Abraham doesn't have a child. So God said to Abraham, I'm still going to bless you. So Abraham said, you know, God, how can you say you're going to bless me seeing that there is no one in my house and the only one I have is this Eliezer. Are you following what I'm saying? So God said to him, all right, Abraham, since it seems you don't believe what I have promised you, let's put my promise to a test. So God said to Abraham, I want you to offer me a sacrifice. So this is the sacrifice that God requested from Abraham. Genesis chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, and he said to him, God said to Abraham, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Verse 10. Then Abraham brought all these to him and cut them in two. I want you to notice what's happening here. So Abraham brought all this and cut them in two down the middle and placed each opposite the other but he did not cut the birds in two. So now God said to Abraham, bring me a sacrifice. So God made specific requests what he must bring. A three-year turtle dove, a three-year pigeon, a three-year this, blah, blah, blah. So Abraham brought all of that. And guess what he did? Abraham cut the animals into two. And the moment he cut the animals into two, these are now dead animals. They are not living. Are you getting the picture? They are not dead offering. They are not living sacrifice. They are dead sacrifice. But something very interesting happened here. When Abraham cut the animals into two, the Bible says, then all of a sudden, he fell into a deep sleep. He fell into a deep sleep, and then God came during the time of Abraham's sleep, and God said to Abraham, know of a surety that descendants after you are going to go into slavery for 400 years. Now, isn't it interesting? God has requested for specific order of sacrifice. Abraham did perfectly as God ordered. And then God comes to say, know of a surety your descendants are going to go into slavery for 400 years. Did Abraham do anything wrong? He didn't. He did everything right. But I love 
what God said. God said, but after that, after the 400 years of slavery, they are going to come out with great plenty. And we're going to dig deep on this during covenant. Then you can understand how the journey started. Where God have to now come in and say to Pharaoh, let my covenant people go. And I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but before you come to covenant, you'll be totally liberated. Amen. Say a good amen. amen. So Abraham did everything that God told him. He offered his first dead sacrifice. Now, let's move on a little bit, and then we go to Genesis chapter 22. This is now key of the message. Genesis chapter 22 God comes to Abraham again. Now, God has fulfilled his promises to Abraham. You know the story. Uh, uh, Sarah gave uh, her maid to Abraham to have a baby because she thought this promise was delaying. And sometimes that's what happens. We try to help God. You can't help God. If God says, I'll do A, don't try to help him. Amen? Amen? Don't try to help God. Every time you try to help God, you are actually prolonging your own destiny. So Sarah helped Abraham, gave Hagar. They had a child called Ishmael. And you know the story. Uh, later on, finally, uh, Sarah became pregnant. And then Isaac was born. And in the house, there was contention. Now, Ishmael represents the flesh. Isaac represents the spirit. And Galatians says, there will always be a fight between the spirit and the flesh. How many of you have decided to wake up early in the morning and pray, and your body tells you, sleep a little bit more. Two more minutes. That's your Ishmael right there. That's the flesh. The flesh is always fighting the spirit. Are you following me? So now Ishmael and Isaac are fighting. Then Sarah comes and tells uh, Abraham, this can't be. You have to send this boy out of the house because he's not a child of the promise. So Abraham did what Sarah said. The child was sent away. Now after the child is sent away to a land Abraham didn't know about, God comes to Abraham and look at what happened. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1. The Bible says that now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, here I am, Abraham said. Then he said, now God is speaking, verse 2, he said, take now your son your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Underline that. Whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now notice what God is requesting of Abraham. Take now your son, your only son, God is specific. When God comes to test us, he is specific. He said, your only son, because if, if, if God had not said to Abraham, take now your son, your only son, he would have gone coming and looking for Ishmael. But not only that, God was specific. God said, your only son whom you love. And not only that God was specific, he named who he wanted to be sacrificed unto him. He said, take now your only son, Isaac. And God said, offer him as a burnt offering. Now, I want you to, this is so important. You say, why would God ask Abraham to sacrifice his son as a burnt offering? This time, God is not requesting for a goat. He's not requesting for a bull. He's not requesting for a cow. He's requesting for a human being. 
to be sacrificed. Verse 3, the Bible says, So Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled the donkey and took two of his young men with him, Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and he arose and went to the place of which God had told him. So notice, this is an, a, a sacrifice that is being requested by God, and God showed him the specific place where he must take this sacrifice and sacrifice this sacrifice. So Abraham obeyed and went to that specific place which God had told him. If God requests specifics from you, may I please tell you not to do other than what he requests from you. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship and will come back to you. Verse 6, so Abraham took the wood and of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire on his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look at the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. I love this. Abraham built an altar and placed the wood, how? In order. God expects every offering we offer to him should be done, how? Orderly. Orderly. He placed the wood in order and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now I want to pause here and bring something to your attention. Isaac is not dead. Isaac is living. Are you following me? Isaac is not dead. Isaac is living. Now, in those days, before you place your sacrifice upon the altar, it has to be dead. But in this instance, Abraham is placing Isaac bound, who is a living sacrifice. He's not dead. He is living. Because at this point, Isaac could have wrestled his father because his father is over 100 years old. This boy is definitely stronger than his father. This boy could have said, no way, because he asked his father, this is the wood, this is the fire, where is the lamb? Because he has seen it, Isaac, in his days, that the only thing offered as offering or burnt offering is lamb. But in this instance, Abraham is reversing the trend. Abraham is saying to God, if really you want my son, I am going to sacrifice him unto you, not as dead, but as a living sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the Bible says, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, yeah. not as dead sacrifice, yeah. as a living sacrifice. So Abraham was teaching us how this is possible. And you say, Pastor, but why is Abraham doing this? Why did God come to test Abraham? I'll show you in a minute and you will see. I've told you that every living sacrifice that God requests from us, it's our reasonable service. God will never request anything from you that is not reasonable. If God says win soul, it is reasonable service. 
If God says fast, it's a reasonable service. If God says pray, it's a reasonable service. If God says give, it's a reasonable service. He will never request anything from you that he knows you can't give. Verse 10, the Bible says that, and, and Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called from heaven and said unto Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad and do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. For now I know that you fear God. Can God say that about you? It says, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Mm, mm, mm. Now, let's go back and ask ourselves one question. Why was God asking Abraham to sacrifice his only son? This is the first instance in Bible where God is requiring Requesting for a human sacrifice. It's never happened. Now, I want to tell you a, bit, a, a little background about Abraham. Remember, Abraham's father is called Terah. Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. They came from a lineage that offered life human beings to their gods. So God is saying to Abraham, if you truly say you love me, you have been in that covenant or that idol worshiping for 75 years. If you really say you love me, let's see. Remember, that's what the Bible says. That, and God tested Abraham. Genesis 22 verse 1. It was a test. God will always test what's in your heart. Not that God wanted Isaac as an offering. He just wanted to test whether Abraham's love was genuine. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 21. Let me show you how Abraham's father's lineage, what they were doing in those days. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 21. It says, and you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech. Molech there was the God. Nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Now, let's go to the King James Version. The King James Version says, your sons and your daughters. So this Molech was a God, was a particular God that only accepted sacrifices of the children, boys and girls. So if the altar of Molech was there, there was a huge fire here that they'll have to put their children through to offer as a sacrifice unto Molech. So God is saying, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed, thy seed there means your children, Pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shall you profane the name of the Lord. This was what Abraham's father, this was what they were doing. Now go with me to Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 35. Jeremiah 32, verse 35. It says, And they built the high places of Baal, in the valley of the son of Hinnom to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. You see what I've just told you now. So their sons and their daughters were passing through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it unto my mind, that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. So in those days, they were offering their children 
as a living sacrifice unto an, an idol worshipping God. So when Abraham now has become a friend of God, God said, let me test whether you really, really trust me. So God said to Abraham, put Isaac on your altar. Sacrifice him like you people were doing to your Molech God. And that was the first time God requested a living sacrifice, a human being from any of his children. And you know the end of the story? The angel of the Lord called out and said, don't do this evil to the son. And uh, let's read it quickly, verse 13. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, there was a ram caught in the thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram by, and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Look at, look at what's happening here right now. Look at what God was going to demonstrate to us on the cross. We were the ones supposed to have gone through the fire, be burnt by the devil, be offered as a sacrifice, but Abraham said, let me reverse this order. Let me reverse this order. So whilst Abraham was offering Isaac, God said, wow, Abraham, if you're able to do this, I will offer Jesus on your behalf. That's why Jesus on the cross, he was not dead. He was living. He was, he was nailed to the cross alive, living, because God said, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Isaac could have crawled off the altar. Jesus could have come off the cross. But the Bible says, you and I must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. There's so much to teach, but we can't finish it all because of time. But I want you, I'm still to an extent laying the foundation of this message. Listen, God will never request from you anything that's not reasonable. Yeah, yeah, amen. That's why I don't understand Christians who argue, why should I tithe? God says, take 90%. Give me 10%. <laughs> is, is, is that reasonable? Yes. Is that reasonable? Yes. Oh, I can't hear you. Yes. Why are you quiet now? He said, Abraham blessing, am I? No, you can't be Abraham's blessing. You haven't done what Abraham did. You are not willing to sacrifice. You are not willing to put your bodies as a living sacrifice, he said, Abraham, blessing I have. No, 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 no. It don't work that way. We are living sacrifice. We present our bodies unto God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Why don't we just for a moment where you are in your seated position ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart to help you. To help you. To help you become a living sacrifice. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Where you have failed, ask him to help you. Talk to the Lord, ask him to help you. Some of us offering ourselves as living sacrifice will be to just rededicate our lives. To go back to the first love. 
to love God with all our heart. Somebody has living sacrifices, we go back to prayer. Pray like you used to pray before. Some of us is dedication. Dedicate your whole life, your whole family to the things of God. Talk to God, talk to God. Ask God to help you. Ask him to give you the grace to present your bodies. Wherever there is weakness, ask him to help you, to strengthen you. The Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. Let the weak say I am strong. Present this church as a living sacrifice unto you from generation to generation. We live a sacrificial life. We dedicate everything unto you. Take us as we are, Lord. Use us for your kingdom. Use us for your purpose. We repent of our sins. We come before you with a heart open and wide that you do what you only can do. Strengthen.